Hello, good evening. I am Professor Kim Osiya Asimiro and I was invited by Instabite Publications to discuss educational leadership in the new normal. <clears throat> All of us now, we cannot call ourselves experts these days because we are all going to enter the present situations uh, at the same time. Meaning, <clears throat> if he is going to enter this situation today, I will also enter it today. We are all unknowledgeable regarding uh, this situation that we are going to enter into. So uh, I would say that uh, there are no better leaders now, there are no better people now, but uh, the key to this pandemic that we are facing now is we have to be adapt we have to be adaptive to the present situation we have to be open to new learning <clears throat> we have to be considerate to whatever change that is coming okay so the first topic that i am to discuss is a uh, change leader all of us will become change leaders and we cannot just simply rely on the traditional method or traditional thing that we were into before. I'm not saying that we are to erase all of the things that we have learned before. Of course, we have to maintain some and utilize some. But we have to be open to change that is offered to us, changes that are catered, because we <clears throat> cannot be very useful as leaders or will not be very much effective and efficient if we are not open to what you call change. The first thing that I have to talk about regarding change is we have to be a key to a large scale and sustainable form. Meaning, it is not just the parents that we have to take into consideration regarding this. It is not only the students, but also the teachers, teachers, students, parents, and all the stakeholders inside the school. We have to take into consideration because they are all involved in this. It is not only the principal who will decide on whatever the things that we are going to implement in the present situation that the school is facing. Of course, we will be the one to convene all the people. We will be the one to be the key on how to start and when to start and where to start. But always remember <clears throat> that being collaborative these days is the very effective thing that we have to take into consideration or we have to practice. If the ideas of these people will be very much helpful, we have to take into consideration. If their ideas will be very useful, we have to take it into consideration. And of course, uh, we as principals or administrators of the schools, both in the public and private schools, we have to be very careful in dealing with all of these stakeholders because we have to answer or address all of their concerns. What I see is first in the large scale thing, the difference in the public and private school, the very thing that they are in dif the, the, the very thing they are different right now is the budget and funding. Private schools, of course, will be having a very hard time on how to deal with budget because they need this budget, of course, to suffice the needs of the teachers regarding the salaries, to suffice the needs of the school regarding facilities. So they are going to depend on the, how many enrollees they are going to have in this new normal season. Unlike in <coughs> the public school, wherein I believe they are supported by the government. So it's, I'm not saying that it's easier for you, but it's easier for public school to implement or execute plans because you have budget. Take note again, I'm not saying it's easy for you, but it's easier for public schools to implement and execute plans than, than the private schools. <clears throat> Next is instructional and innovative leader. Uh, we have to be a kind of leader wherein we're not afraid to take risks, we're not, afraid, we're not afraid to innovate, and we're not afraid to embrace the changes that we are going to face come August 2020, if it's really approved by the IITF. It is already recommended by the Department of Education, I believe also by Commission in Higher Education, uh, but uh, the final approval, I believe, will be coming from the IATF and, of course, the Office of the President. <coughs> Creates fundamental transformation. Remember, if you if you have studied uh, different uh, educational management subjects in your masters and doctors, my dear principals, supervisors, department heads, uh, we have to be a leader that is transformative. Uh, we do not only transform the students through the knowledge that we give them, but we let them adapt to the change that is coming. We can never say that we are transformative leader if we will let them uh, still hang their self or 
uh, immerse themselves in the past situations that they were before. They ha we have to teach them that adapting the present situation is very much needed or a must for us. We should make it or implement it in a very smooth and positive manner. Remember, no matter how uh, passive your students are, so as with the parents, it is just in a matter of explaining. If your explaining is very much detailed and you will let it penetrate to the minds of the stakeholders, I, get, I, I will say it again. I, I will not say that it's easy, but it will be easier. Naniniwala po ako na walang hindi nakukuha sa tama at maayos na paliwanag. Next, uh, there are subdivisions or subtopics that we have to discuss under the change leader or leader as a game changer. First is the culture change. We were in a culture before that even we have less technology, students would learn just because the teacher is teaching the subject so well depending upon his or her ability to teach. <clears throat> but now, uh, we have to take into consideration, I believe and I, I, I admit that it is hard to execute learning these days because of the present situation we are in too. But I also believe that complaining is not a key to a better life. I was reading comments from different Facebook pages of different journal type pages like uh, Inquirer, Manila Bulletin, GMA, ABS, CBN, Rappler, although I do not patronize Rappler for the reason that I know you understand. Uh, there must be something in us that can be convincing for everyone. If we were able to explain to students, to teachers, to stakeholders, and everyone that yes, we have different kinds of situation, but our school, our people are equipped with this. You know, we can let them follow us. It is not a reason for us because we don't have this technology. We don't have this. We don't want to. We don't want to come to school. You know, it depends upon the school and how convincing you would be and how prepared you will be. I I just advise a certain school that. Uh, if I am to put myself into the uh, situations of the parents, the reason why I do not want to put my students or to enroll my students in the school year, in the coming school year, is because of the safety. And of course, if, if the school is equipped with facilities that enough that is enough to cater the needs of my children, I, I advise them. <coughs> uh, first, you have to tell the parents that you are equipped with healthy health and safety procedures. So you have to, to post in your advertisements on your Facebook pages that you have the health committee in your school, you have doctors and nurses inside, you have these protocols and precautions aligned to the uh, aligned to the rules of IATF, aligned to the competencies or, or regulations of the IATF, so as with the DOH. Okay? Uh, next is <clears throat> the, the types of learning that we have to immerse our students. I believe uh, traditional would not be effective these days. It's just a matter of conditioning the minds of the students. They don't want online learning, they say. But you must tell them the reality how come your children or how come other students can have an only internet using Facebook pages and messengers and others if you are not capable of using it? I believe online, online modality of learning is very much applicable for junior high school or may I say grade 5 up to college or even graduate school. But I do suggest this in grade one, two, and three, or even preschool, we use blended learning, wherein they will be backed up by their parents. So as with, uh, they have to come into school for a certain number of days. This is the set A and set B of the classes, and they will be immersed also by the online teaching. <clears throat> I also believe that teachers should be given proper training with this present situation that they are going to immerse themselves into. 
the technology, the approach, <clears throat> how are they going to <clears throat> execute such. All of this should be tackled whenever you're going to have the teachers to be trained because teachers are the ones who are going who's going to deal with the students. They are also the ones who, who are going to deal with the parents. So they should be given proper trainings. Uh, I, I, I always believe that investment is the best tool for the teachers to learn. Whether you are private or or public, you have to give them the best training these days. I be, uh, yes, maybe there is a shortage of budget, but what is this? If we are going to produce best teachers that can cater the needs of the students that we have. <clears throat> Next is moral purpose. It's not only technology that we have to learn. It is not only um, the policies that we have to adopt into, but of course our duty as principals, as leaders of the institutions, is to change lives and bridge gaps. We have to change lives these days in a manner that we will, we will make them learn. Even we have these kinds of situation. They will graduate, they will step up into another level from grades 1 to whatever grade it is safely. We will be touching their lives and I believe and I, I firmly believe that they will thank us if we will successfully let them study and learn amid the crisis we are facing. <clears throat> uh, bridging the gaps, uh, there are so many issues today that the, the Philippine government has to address. So was with the Department of Education. But it is within my principle <clears throat> always to ask and verify but not to complain. Because complaining would not do any good. We have to be submissive and at the same time suggestive to have a very collaborative team and make things work. <clears throat> Next is uh, understanding change. We cannot force people to move for us. We cannot force teachers to work for us. We cannot force parents to enroll their students. Even we cannot let students to go to us. If we will not let them understand the change. We have to be very informative. We have to let them know how to deal with these kinds of situation, situations. Uh, it's just a matter of communication commu or communicating properly. Understanding a change is the key, one of the keys for them to understand how things will go. If I, if for example, I will imagine that I am the student or I am the parent, I will not enroll my children or I as a student will not tell my parents to enroll me if I do not understand what is really happening, <clears throat> and if I, I will not also understand what are the plans and safety precautions of the institution. Next is, when we talk about understanding change, uh, we have to selectively innovate and maintain some protocols. Uh, it is not because we have the new normal, we have to omit or delete or, or just erase everything that we had in the past, because those will be helpful. It's like, Developing, developing a new vaccine through those vaccines before that were implemented or made. Next is, <clears throat> uh, do not, no matter how you plan, no matter how many preparations you had, the first six months, based on study and researches, the first six months of the implementation and execution will be very much shaky. Okay? This is a trial and error for everyone so do not do not be sad do not be do not feel guilty if there will be errors committed by the plans you have made and for the parents and stakeholders do not just blame those teachers and administrators because of some errors i hope there will never be errors but it's it, it's impossible uh, instead we have to if you have something in mind that you think that could help the institution you have to raise there's nothing wrong raising these concerns because that's why we are stakeholders of the institution. Next is redefine resistance and address concerns. There will always be resistance, most especially in this time. 
we will be redefining this, of course, by transforming resistance and complaints to understanding simply by addressing the concerns. Yes, it's very laborious and tiring to answer concerns in Facebook pages, in social media, or even in personal practicing social distancing. It's very tiring and laborious, but it is our duty. And the moment we fulfill this duty, I believe everything will be fine. Next is improving relationships. Uh, why, do I why did I include relationships in this? If we have constant communication with the parents, informing them whatever changes we're going to have in the near future, or whatever plans that we will be implementing, or activities that we're going to have, uh, the moment we have constant communication, it will be easier for us and very smooth for us to execute whatever things we have. Next is knowledge creation and sharing. Uh, of course, we are all on the stage of researching, develop, developing new protocols, uh, developing new policies aligned with the needs of the institution, and we should be able to share it not only to ourselves, but to those uh, teachers that we have. They should be knowing all of this because they are going to, they are the ones who will serve our clients best. Okay. Next is leadership and sustainability. There are people who are very good in planning, but they are, once they have planned it, they cannot execute it. They cannot execute it in the succeeding months or years. We have to be firm and we have to be constant and consistent whenever we would like to have sustainability because sustainability is the key to a better thing or to a better plan. <clears throat> Next is uh, developing the social environment smoothly. Uh, I have discussed this a while ago that we have to deal with the parents, we have to deal with the students very smoothly. Next, cultivating leaders at many levels. For public schools, I believe principals and their chair, chairman for every uh, grade level or coordinators for private schools. We have different nomenclatures of positions. It is not only the principal or the top management that is going to supervise everyone, but of course we have to assign heads of committees, coordinators to have a, bit, a, a better facilitation of the plans that we are going to execute. Remember that it's two heads is better than one. What more if we had if we have more heads? Okay? <clears throat> Enhancing the teaching profession. As I've said a while ago, uh, if we give trainings before, we should be giving more trainings now. But I, I, I don't know if there will be a face to face seminar these days. But we can let them learn through webinars, online seminars like this. Because we can learn on this during our free time, okay? I give them the support that they need, okay? Wala po ngayon ako principal, ako may alam, no? It should be collaborative, okay? I'm going to shift to the next. <clears throat> okay, the next topic that we're going to discuss is leaders as empowering tools, okay? Uh, there is different subdivisions and factors that we have to take into consideration. First is to develop a continuity of learning plan. Okay. It is going to be very hard for teachers, so as with administrators, if we don't have a learning continuity plan. Because these are series of things that we have to follow and we have to immerse ourselves into. I believe also that we have to Revisit our curriculum, the policies that we had before. We're not going to delete it all, but we have to change some aligned to the needs of the present situation. <clears throat> Next, shift and design for equity. Uh, for public schools, I don't know on how are they going to have the new facilities because they are very much into it right now. So budget will not be a problem. But in private schools, uh, we really have to invest into it. Parents are complaining, our clientels are complaining. How are you, how are we going to make our students learn if they don't have the internet? Of course, not all schools are capable of doing this. But I suggest 
that we have to take a risk. Uh, just like Ateneo, <clears throat> I'm not saying that you, you do whatever Ateneo did. They let students bring home uh, the tablets so they can learn. Uh, maybe, I, I, I teach in graduate school, so I, 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 I heard or I try to accept suggestions of the students that they are not they are not capable of immersing themselves to the zoom thing the application of zoom so i tried to i tried finding ways or locating ways on how they will learn in my subject even they are not going to immerse themselves into zoom app or even in the facebook uh live or whatever uh i told them i will just have a tape video I will send it into Messenger, read it during or watch it during your free time, but this is the deadline wherein you're going to submit the output that I'm going to tell you. They're going to watch it during their free time, but still, there is a deadline wherein uh, they have to submit the output that you're expecting. They learn, but they are not burdened. I believe that we have to combine both worlds, make it easy for them, but still make sure that they have to learn okay i i strongly believe that education if it's forced it will not be very effective next is creating an actionable teaching and learning plan i discussed this a while ago <clears throat> support system to stakeholders teachers these days are seeking for support proper trainings salaries incentives because they are facing a very difficult time nurses and medical personnel are the considered front liners these days i salute them but this coming august teachers are the new front liners because we have to take care of the students we will give extra efforts we have to give ourselves to them. You know what? I am feeling very much down whenever I see teachers struggling into this. But I salute those teachers and principals who have brave hearts dealing with this. That's why I'm very much happy that Instabright invited me in discussing this because I am really willing to share whatever things that I have. I'm not really an expert into this. I, I've said a while ago, there are no experts these days. But at least I will be able to share knowledge to all of you. <coughs> Next, routine check-ins. Uh, do not be lax whenever you develop protocols already. Check up on it, okay? You have to check on this or check on that from time to time. So you can detect or locate whenever there are lapses and you automatically arrange or fix it right there and then. Okay? Key and eye on operations. I believe a good leader is practices not practices both macro and micromanagement. Okay? Uh, I am into that because I really don't just stick into one approach. It should be a multi-approach. Practicing macro and micro. A management or other levels of management by Henry Fayol may be very much effective. Uh, next, reflect and grow. We have to reflect day by day. Did I implement it correctly? Did I gave my did I give my best? So the moment we have accepted that there are mistakes, or the moment we have accepted that there are lapses in the thing that we had, I believe that we will be growing enough, and we will be perfect fit to the present situation or to the new normal. <coughs> okay. The very crucial thing that we are to have is the reopening of classes. Because this is like a trial and error. I'm sorry for the hair. I have a long hair because you know I am practicing social distancing and I also follow orders from the IATF not to go outside. I am a very much abiding citizen. 
I hope you too. First is relaunch. Treat like beginning of the school year. Treat like it is the same beginning of the school year before. And you have to reset and redefine all the protocols. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> it is hard to have the same beginning that we had before. But don't let your students feel that they are lacking something. So I've told you earlier, it depends on the teachers. It also depends on the group, the team, the administrators, on how to let the students feel that it's still the school that they were studying before. Uh, meet the parents, ask for suggestions, meet the teachers, uh, ask the students so through Facebook Messenger or Messenger just to be safe because we don't want the students to go out. Uh, and develop from different strategies that, you, that they suggested, combine it and form a better one. Next is transition, smooth and positive transition. It is very hard for us now to assure that there will be smooth transition. Shifting from face-to-face -to, -face to online or blended learning is not easy because we have to make them understand first why these changes are happening and why would we have to implement such change to them. That's why I, was, I, am, suggesting, I, I am suggesting to have students to have better training to have better knowledge, so as with the teachers. You know what, I don't want to make this seminar, you know, a very traditional seminar. That's why I am trying to let these topics connect with the present situation. I'm not making this, you know, the super formal seminar that we had because I would want this to be very, Re very re relative to the situations we are facing. If we are going to make this the very you know, formal thing, no one would try to uh, understand. That's why the words that I'm using is very much related to the present situation that we're facing. The topics that I am telling you are the present things that we have. I do not want to divulge or indulge myself, correction, I do not want to indulge myself in those terminologies that have not yet been proven, but I would want us to indulge ourselves to these things that I know and I believe that could help. Next is address the reality. Wala pong mangyayari. Pag magmukmuk po tayo, Magantay tayo na ang gobyerno ang gagalaw. No. We are part of this country, so we are part of developing this institution. Be a trailblazer. Just like Ateneo, they call themselves trailblazers. We have to be trailblazers as well. Just like the motto of Our Lady of Fatima University, the tagline, the mission vision, to improve man as man, the moment. We we'll let the students learn. We we'll let the parents understand. We have improved man as man. <clears throat> Set priorities and goals. Action plan, the new action plan. I guess we have to change the action plans that we did before. So what's with the five year development plan or SIP and AIP to government institutions. We have to change it, revise or redefine so that it would be easy for us to adapt in the situation. But the academic council of the institution and the administrative council had to revisit all of these set priorities and set goals, uh, which is which, the first is first. We have to take into consideration what we are going to do first, what are we going to do next, what are we going to do if these things will happen. We have to uh, be a multi-thinker. What will happen if this are the things that we have to do, what will happen if these are the things that we do, what will happen if we committed these mistakes, what will happen if we add this into this. We have to take into, into consideration all of the factors uh, that could be possible to be involved in the present situation or in the present pandemic outbreak, not only in the Philippines but in the world. Our next schedule adjustment. Uh, 
what are the adjustments that we have to see? First, scenario building and adjustment when, I'm when it comes to health protocols. Both in public and private institutions, you should be immersing yourselves into the guidelines given by the IITF. We should be following those procedures because they know better than us. Make sure that there are medical personnel in your school, health committee, maybe the science teachers, the TLE teachers, medical personnel, one doctor or more doctors, dentist, so as well nurses. These are the knowledgeable people to help us. Okay? <clears throat> Next, salaries of staff, both for private and public. I believe that public schools do not have problems when it comes to salary because they are considered regular. Okay? They have permanent status. They have items. For private schools, this is the perfect, this is the perfect time for us to let our teachers feel that they have support. Not only just by trainings that we're going to give them, but of course when it comes to salaries. Many plan that there will be adjustments of salary because they will be using online. They still exert effort even if it's online learning. So we better give them incentives. I, I know some schools who sacrifice their own money just to provide something for the teachers. I know schools who converted Christmas packages or the budget for outing or budget for other activities for the school and convert it into cash and give them to teachers. They need it badly these days. Okay? Remember, teachers are our keys for the students to learn. Teachers are the mediators. They are the mediators for parents, students, and all the stakeholders. Okay? I will not make this seminar very long because there are still topics that are unseen and untouched by the experts in the Philippines. So I do not want to dip my fingers to it and make myself all-knowing. I would like to touch those topics that you can relate into and it will be very much help helpful for all of us. Okay? Uh, if you have questions, uh, I can, if you have questions, I can give you my uh, Facebook page, keep, I know, Facebook account, Facebook page are for those celebrities, I'm not a celebrity, keep Ozia G. Casimiro, okay? Now, uh, don't forget to subscribe whenever you are going to watch this video. The URL will be posted on the advertisement that will be given or that will be provided by Instabrite Publications. I, I, I repeat, don't forget to subscribe. Okay? Thank you very much for this day. I hope you learned something. Whenever you have questions, I am willing to entertain. I, am, I can answer you through Messenger. Do not hesitate. Do not be shy. Okay? Again, my Facebook page is Kiv Ozia Hener Casimiro. I can also provide you my business number because I have my private number so, and I have my business number. It's 0915 497 0345. Do not worry, I entertain messages and calls. I am very much approachable. <clears throat> Again, 0915 497 0345. So whenever there are questions, you can easily send it to my Facebook account or Messenger or you can actually call me or text me in the messages. Or you may simply course your questions through Insta by publications and they will be the ones to tell you what will my answers be. Okay? Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you.